Hey, this is Uncensored with Caesar, and I'm here with my guest, actor and musician, Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Citric. What up, what up, what up, man? How are you? I'm good, bro, and you? I'm doing good. So, can you tell me a little about yourself, like, for viewers that don't know who you are? Well, basically, uh, I started off as a rapper, you know, back in the early 90s, and then uh, a little by little, I transitioned into uh, an actor by accident. <laughs> 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 I say by accident, but, you know, everything happens for a reason, I guess, you know? But uh, I, I turned into actor and, uh, you know, did a couple movies here and there and, and commercials, for, uh, television, uh, voiceovers, and then uh, ended up working for George, George Lopez. Yeah, you might as well just say you had your whole <laughs> resume set already. <laughs> 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 and like you just mentioned, you worked with George. Um, how is it working on set with George Lopez? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's comedy, you know. It's, it's like, it's like, I always say it's like a, like a front row seat at a comedy show. And all day he's just he's just clowning around and mm-hmm. having a good time, you know. But when it's time to work, it's time to work. <laughs> and right now you did um, you're working on a show called Lopez on TV Land, correct? Right, right. Can you tell me about that? Well, basically, Lopez is a uh, is uh, a show about George Lopez about his life, but not like uh, your typical sitcom uh, uh, TV show. It's more like a reality show about him. You know, it's it's pretty much on point. Every story on there is like real, real stuff mm-hmm. that's happened to him. But of course, for comedy reasons and television, you know, they they add a little bit more, more to it than what it is. But the, for the most part, they're all real stories about George. So it's things that he actually been through, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. Basically, just you know, it's it's crazy because uh, he's poking fun at himself. You know, he never mm-hmm. really does that. You know, so and like none of his in none of his comedy. But now it's like on this, so it's it's like it's it's refreshing for a lot of people to see this side of George. Because even at the um show that I went to with where you guys the whole cast, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh-huh. He was actually really funny. Like that's why I'm like, damn, this guy really has it. Like he's not. Yeah, it's not, naturally in him. Yeah, exactly. It, it, there's no switch. You know, like mm-hmm. it's on, like it, it's it's pretty much on all the time. And uh, so and even when he's serious, sometimes you don't even know he's serious. That's what I was just gonna ask. Are there times where he's on set to where he does like kind of snap, or it's just like you say, you don't know that he's serious yeah. or not? Yeah, because he's always roasting you, no matter what. You know, it's like nobody's safe. So yeah, so yeah, you know, there'll be times where 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 he'll come off serious, but it's so funny that you don't even know whether to take him serious or what. <laughs> no, I wouldn't know how to handle that because I'm the type that I would keep digging and I get someone pissed. <laughs> and um. Your character on the show. Explain that your character to me because I seen it, but I want to see how you, how I explain. It. I want to see how you're gonna tell me about it. Well, basically, um, uh, my character name is Manolo, mm-hmm. and, and I'm his friend from the neighborhood. Like I'm like we grew up together, and along the line, you know, I end up in jail. I go to jail, I get out. I'm on parole, and then uh, we, we we end up meeting up at our local restaurant, and I and. He's having issues all the time, getting into trouble, and uh, he needs a driver. So he ends up hiring me to be his driver. So it's like I become his driver and his bodyguard. But throughout the way, as we have our little adventures, I'm mm-hmm. supposed to be like the voice of reason for him. Even though I don't understand or know anything about the <laughs> industry, but I'm just supposed to be like the voice of reason. But sometimes Manolo is like this character that so innocent. At the same time, he's hardcore, but he's mm-hmm. innocent in the sense where he don't know what's going on. In, in, in Georgia's industry, which is the uh, comedy entertainment industry. So, the like, I kind of got a feeling of your character, is he kind of, how do you, slow? Yeah, he's kind of, that's what I'm saying, he's like <laughs> hardcore, but at the same time, yeah. he's like slow, but because he's like so innocent and he really don't know a lot of the stuff that's going on mm-hmm. around, you know, with, and so he just says things bluntly without even, without even no thought to it, you know? Yeah, because I got, like, Billy Madison. Yeah, <laughs> that's what came to my head when I seen your character. I'm like, oh, Billy Madison. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like he's like a big kid, pretty much. You know, he's like a big kid, and he's just having a good time. But at the same time, it's like he could be really mean when he has to. Mm-hmm. You know, if George tells him, "Hey, man, I need I need you to take care of somebody," then I'll, you know, Manolo is gonna go take care of him. But at the same time, he's just like a big kid. And you guys are in your second season. Yes, season two. You know, um, season one was great. Season two is even better. You know, it's uh, a lot more. Uh, in depth with all our characters and more, I, I think they added more, more, uh, more relevant stuff of what's mm-hmm. going on today. And I, I just think it's funny, man, the way everything goes yeah. down. And is there already plans for a season like three, or you can't talk about? None well, of that? I mean, not necessarily. I can't talk about it. Just like I really don't know an answer for sure yet. Like if we have a season three, but mm-hmm. it's looking really strong because every week the, the ratings keep going up, and we're, we're like pretty, we're pretty high up there on TV land um, as far as ratings. 
So it, it looks it looks good, you know. I, just don't, <laughs> I don't want to say anything yet, but it looks it looks it looks pretty good, it's promising. And your manager happens to be a girlfriend, correct? Yes, yes. So how do you guys divide your business with your relationship? Like, does that sometimes interfere? Or are you guys like, you know what, you're my manager when we're doing business, but out like outside of business, we're not going to talk about any work. I mean, it's 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 crazy, but it's like at the same time, it, it works. You know, mm-hmm. it's just it's just kind of weird. In the beginning, it was kind of weird, but. But it worked well, you know. She's uh, my she's right here. As a matter of fact, taking some footage. You know, Marisol, <laughs> shout out to Marisol. Um, it's like in the beginning, you know, but it's like she okay. Her background, she has a lot of uh, manager uh, skills as, uh-huh. as far as uh, management, office management. So, in you know, like for a while, my, like I'm really unorganized, and I am not ashamed to say, like, <laughs> my, I'm like all over the place. So, so she kind of stepped in at the mm-hmm. right time, and she was you know started organizing a lot of my stuff, and and, and she just started running everything. And, Everything has been in tip top shape, but I mean, there's there's times where yeah, you know, we kind of like we go to we we go to sleep talking about business, we wake up talking about business. <laughs> so, but you know, but in, in between, we we always find a balance to where it's just it's just us yeah. and it's not even about business. Right, like when she texts me, um, <laughs> when she texts me earlier and said her name and everything that your your manager, yeah, like oh shit, this is getting serious now. <laughs> let me let me hurry up and get this out. <laughs> <laughs> and what does your family think about your lifestyle? Um, I mean, you know, it just, I've been doing this for a minute, you know, as far as the, mm-hmm. the, the music stuff and then the, you know, the acting, you know, but it wasn't on this level where it's at now. So it's kind of like, it just took everybody kind of like by surprise in yeah. a way, you know, like all of a sudden they started seeing me on television and hearing me on radio everywhere. So like now they're like, man, you know, but everybody's proud of me, you know, and they, they, they look at me like, like I'm the one that made it. But in reality, I mean, reality, I don't feel like I, I made it. I mean, I still feel like I'm. I'm on the grind and doing stuff, you know, just, you know, just on another level right now. So you're not exactly where you want to be in your career yet? I mean, I don't even know. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't even know where I want to be. I just want to be where, where a spot where where I'm just working, making money, comfortable, you know, living comfortable, uh, taking care of my family and my circle, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's basically where I'm at. I'm not really like, like oh, I, I got to be at this point in my career. But yeah. I just feel like, like I need to keep grinding and doing stuff because I think the minute – you stop doing stuff, then you know you you just kind of fall off, and you just stop doing stuff. And then you get you fade out. You fade out, yeah. Basically. Mm-hmm. So I always do hear people talk about like when you're, let's say you came from nothing, and then you become um they call it Hollywood when you get around money and yeah. become famous and stuff. They say you change, and everyone just starts talking shit. Do you feel <laughs> that you changed, or are you still the same person that you were before? I mean, it's 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 crazy because we were just talking about that the other day with Marisol, you know, and mm-hmm. the same thing, you know. And it's like I I feel sometimes like I have changed, but for the better because yeah. I'm trying to better myself and I'm trying to better my lifestyle and the lifestyle of my family. So sometimes, yeah, you will get that mm-hmm. where you know people think, oh, you changed or you went Hollywood, and you know, and Marisol always tells me, yeah, you tell them, yeah, you did go Hollywood because you went. You went to where you know where where you, where you had to be. You're at where you where you yeah. need to be at. You're at right there for a reason. So. You know, and it's not that you change in the bad way. It's just sometimes people, you know, they start seeing you busy and you and you have less time to hang around like we mm-hmm. used, like you know used to back in the days. And people start seeing that, like, man, you know, like this guy's not around no more. You know, he changed. And I always you know? tell myself, like, people don't understand just because they're not in the industry. They don't know how it really is, so they're not gonna understand what you're doing and why you're changing. Exactly. Yeah. And how was it growing up, like, for you? I mean, I grew up in the, in the city of East LA, Boyle Heights area, you know, and uh, like every other kid in any other neighborhood, you just don't know the difference until mm-hmm. you get out of there, you know. Yeah. Then, then you start seeing the difference as you get older. But it was a good lifestyle, man. You know, I mean, we didn't have much, but my mom always did. it was you know my mom was a single mom. My dad was always in and out of my life, but I must have seen it in my whole my, my my entire life. I mean, the rest in peace. You know, he's already you know already gone, but I must have seen my dad maybe throughout my whole life, maybe like three times. He was, you know, like when I was like six. Another time when I was like seventeen, maybe eighteen, and then after that, let me like when I was twenty, that was the last time I seen him. And um, I mean, but my mom did whatever she could, you know, mm-hmm. to keep us, you know, keep us afloat. We lived in we lived in a garage was just what there was a, a a one bedroom converted garage, and it was just me and her growing up. And doesn't that push you though, like to be like? You know what, you want to give your mom something that you guys never had. Yeah, exactly. So you want to keep working hard just to prove, you know, something that you can do. Exactly, yeah. You know, so that, that, that's why, you know, I do this. At, at the end of the day, I do this, you know, for, for my family mm-hmm. now, you know, and, and, and 
trying to make a better life for all, for all of us and, and, and just keep keep pushing because, yeah, I think about times like when I was growing up and it was like now I think about it, I'm like, man, it's crazy because now you now, now I see the difference. Mm-hmm. So it is what it is, but, we, you know, we're still on the grind. <laughs> <laughs> That's, don't stop because right? you're obviously doing something right. Exactly. And you did mention um, that acting was an accident. How yeah. <laughs> how did that come about? I mean, you know, like I mean, you know, there's no accidents. You know, everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. A reason, but I always say it's an accident because at the at that time I wasn't trying to pursue acting. You know, yeah. I was I was heavily involved with doing music. I have a group called Pueblo Cafe. It used to be it started off as Brown Town, Brown Town Looters, and then it emerged into Pueblo Cafe. But we've always done Spanish and Spanglish. Mm-hmm. So. I was heavily involved at that time of getting ready to release a, a, an album in 2003, 2004 uh, called uh, Busca Oro. And we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting ready to go on tour and we're doing all the, all the, the, the Spanish uh, TV circuit and all that. And then I get an, a, a call from, uh, from a casting agency. Well, actually one of my boys that they hit him up. His name is Sal Rojas. He, he runs a, a website called uh, brownpride.com and it has some of my music on there, a couple of pictures of me. Mm-hmm. So he called me up and he goes, "Hey, there's this casting agency that saw your picture and they 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 think uh, you're a good fit for a, a movie they're trying to shoot, uh, directed by Mike Judge, the guy that does Beavis and Butthead, mm-hmm. King of the Hill." So I'm like, I mean, I knew who he was right away, and I go, "Damn, you serious?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Give him a call, see what they say." Called him up, and, uh, they sent me the script. If I was interested, they sent me the script, and then uh, a couple weeks later, I went in there for 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 a reading, and uh, they loved it. They showed the video to Mike Judge, and then Mike Judge said he was. He was really enjoying the performance. He thought it was funny, and then uh, so um, they, they I, I had another reading with him, and then after that, it was just it was history. And they might so I basically I came in the in the business through Mike Judge. So was that when you realized like you do have the talent to act? Is it like something that you're interested in, or during that time you're were, you're were kind of still iffy about it? Like, do I still want to do acting after this show? Or I mean, I was kind of iffy, but then I started getting a little bit more work mm-hmm. because of that, you know, and then. Uh, he started putting me in some other stuff, and then he goes, "Man, I think you got a great voice for for voiceovers. Um, wanted to do uh, something for King of the Hill because I got yeah. I got a character that for one of the episodes that I think it'll work. So I did that, and then after that, I got a couple other gigs like with Squidbillies and and stuff like that. And and so I just kept going, and I did uh, Harsh Times with uh, Christian Bale on Even mm-hmm. It was a more of an underground movie, but but it was a good experience, and it, it, it's still out there right now. And I guess." People, you got to look for it, but it's out there. <laughs> so are you still, um, like, with your band and everything? Are you guys still doing things, or are you just more focused on something else right now? Well, with the group, as yeah. far as the music, I'm still I'm still with it. I just, uh, what happened is that over the years, I've just been doing stuff for for TV and movies. It's mm-hmm. nice to see my music. That's another thing. I got blessed with the opportunity to throw in our music. And then it got to a point where I wasn't really trying to go on tour no more or do any shows or anything. I wasn't really, like... Yeah. Feeling that, you know, uh, one of my boys that passed away, my partner, rest in peace, they, uh, he went by the name of Brown Weddle. Um, after that, I just wasn't really feeling it, you know, and then I just kind of like, 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 just uh, let it go. And then when I got the Lopez thing, that was my focus, just mm-hmm. doing the acting. And then uh, the, the, those guys were in George and they said, he goes, you know what, we should throw your music in here. I think it'll be a good fit. So next thing you know, we started, you know, we started putting the music in there. And uh, my boy Vic Damone, I, I brought him in to do uh, scoring and production. And uh, he got a gig there out of there, out of there, and he's the one that produces all my stuff for Puerto Cafe. So then we just said, okay, fuck, <laughs> let's keep doing it. So this show is actually doing really good, making, helping you do really good, actually. Yeah. Because you're doing both things you like. Your music is being put in the show, yeah. and then you're still acting. So yeah. it's not like you're losing out on one. Yeah, exactly. It just took me to another platform. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm not really doing shows here and there, but we're still representing as a group. And uh we got a single that that um, they threw me on on one of the episodes of Lopez on episode six on season two where I got to rap. Mm-hmm. So they 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 showcased that more, and then uh, right after that we just dropped a single on iTunes and Amazon and Google. And all that. <laughs> we said we might as well take advantage of it, so we dropped the single, and then uh, we got the video coming out like early June. So you know, so you know, we're, we're just we're just gonna play it by ear, and because a lot of people have been asking me, you gonna do an album or what's gonna happen, and um. I'm just telling them you know, right now. I'm just gonna play it out and uh, see what happens, really. And if you could work with one artist, um, dead or alive, who would that artist be? As far as uh, music, music wise, music wise, mm-hmm. man. Uh, like, was there an artist that you looked up to, like 
that you were like, you know what, I want to be like this person, and then you try to. I mean, it, you know, like during my era, you know, as we grew up, I mean, the only one I could say that I would that, that that I would love to work with on a film and and music would be Tupac. Really? Yeah, you know, and I got to meet Tupac because we did a show one time in 1992, is exactly in up in Berkeley Square mm-hmm. in, in Berkeley, California, where we opened up for uh, for uh, Digital Underground. Damn. Yeah, in a little club, and and so Money B was there, the whole Digital Underground, you know, Shock G, everybody, and Pac was there. He did a couple songs, and we got to kick you backstage, you know, hung out a little bit. So, are you gonna go and support the movie? Are you gonna go to like the oh, yeah, um, red yeah. carpet or anything? Um, you know, we're looking, we're looking to see if, uh, if we're gonna get to do the red carpet, but one way or another, I'm gonna see the movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't right? care. I'm getting there. <laughs> right. <laughs> and. For your character, is it hard um, for Lopez? Is it hard to get into a character like for you? Because since it's something that like, do you feel you could relate to that character? First of all, yeah, I mean, m- most of most for the most part, that that character of Manolo, that's that's pretty much me. You know, like, <laughs> I want to say like eighty percent of it, you know, it's got to be me. And then uh, you know the other the, the other twenty percent is like I understand what they were trying to go mm-hmm. with, you know, as far as the writing. So you know, uh, we, we just we just I, I don't know I just. I go in there and I just kind of like already know what it is, so I really don't prepare for it. I just go in there, and just knock it out. <laughs> so it's not hard at all, then. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you know, like I, like for season two, um, my girlfriend uh, Marisol was helping me do all the 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 reading and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. so so I could learn my lines. So we were we were doing a lot of reading together, and uh, and uh, and and that helped me a lot too. So when I would get on set, I was I felt like I was fully prepared. And then I would just add the dopiness in there and just do it. <laughs> so it's not hard for you to remember scripts, or do you feel you have a problem with? Because um, I know scripts are not just one page, and no, that's it. Like I know they're thick pages. Yeah. So is it hard to remember it for you, or? Um, you know what? Because of my character, the way the way it's structured, it wasn't really too hard. But there was times where where I had to go, um, like on certain days where we had to mm-hmm. film a lot of a lot of my scenes that day. Like the whole day was all me. So I would have to learn, and then a lot of the stuff I would, have, I would learn it the day before. <laughs> yeah, like we would read, like we would read for a couple hours, and then boom, okay, in the morning do another reading on my way to work. <laughs> you know? So by the time I got to by, got, got to set, and then in my trailer, I'd do a couple more, couple more readings, and then by the time I got on set, I was ready. And do you feel like when it's days like that to where you said um, that you do all your scenes in one day? Do you feel like a lot of pressure is on you since pretty much everyone's just focused on you, like? You're the one that's in front of the camera now, not yeah. everyone else. To where the, everyone else has to remember their scripts. It's you. <laughs> yeah, you you can you you can feel the pressure, especially sometimes with George, and he George does it on purpose. <laughs> He'll be like, "Hey, it's all on you, puto. <laughs> Knock it out. <laughs> don't don't mess up." <laughs> and you're working on another show, right? Called um, Tons of Anarchy. Yes, yes. What what is your role in that um, show? Um, um, on this role, I, I mean, on this uh, show, it's, it's uh, tons of anarchy. It's called tons, but we we call it tons of anarchy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically I play a I play a, a a bike biker. I run the I'm the vice president actually of the gang. George Lopez is that also in the in the in the, the series. He plays the the president, but he you never see him like you all, maybe you'll see him. One, twice, maybe three times throughout the you know the, the season. Yeah, because um his role and he's also executive producer for the show. His role is basically you know just the man, the main man behind the behind the scenes. But uh, uh, I'm the the vice president of the of the gang. It's called Los Rudos, and uh, Marisol actually um, plays uh, plays my wife, and then also Cici La Mamacita's in the from Katie. She's in the mm-hmm. she's in it, and she plays the mistress. So you guys are <laughs> in like a love triangle. Yeah, and and her and and Marisol are friends. <laughs> oh hell no! <laughs> <laughs> they're friends, but they're always they're always arguing. So there's, there's going to be some drama in there, but at the same time, it's comedy. So how is it like? I know it's acting and stuff, but does she sometimes like get jealous or like oh, there's like, <laughs> other girls coming up on? Because you guys are obviously in a relationship in real life. Yeah. So does she sometimes get jealous like when Cece's around on set with you guys when you guys are doing your scripts? Well, she knows Cece too, so she's been hanging out, you know, mm-hmm. like for for a long, ever, you know, ever since I, um, I've been doing the the uh, season two even more because you know we've been going to all the same events, we have the same PR people, yeah. So we've been hanging around, so you know, for the most part, they're they're cool, you know, they get along, talk, you know, on the side they talk all the girl stuff, and stuff you know? <laughs> talking <laughs> shit, that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but yeah, no, nah, she 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 doesn't get jealous like that. She's she knows, you know, it's it, it's uh it's part of the part of the show. 
Mm-hmm. And at the same time, she'd be, she'd be clowning. Hey, don't be thinking it's going to be real life like that. <laughs> you guys are going to be like sister yeah. wives on that show. <laughs> she goes, this stays on the, only on camera on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see you in public. <laughs> right? yeah. And um, so you're working with George on two shows then? Yes. yes. Do you guys get tired of each other? No, nah, because, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we, we see each other, but we don't see each other a lot because, you know, he's mm-hmm. busy doing the comedy stuff. So basically, what it's like if we get together, you know, like once in a while, we'll have a, a party at his house, and he'll invite us all, and we'll go down and hang out, stuff like that. But and then on work, it's just, you know, we're on set. He goes, does his thing after, we, after work, and, you know, we, we, we see each other, but we don't see each other enough. Yeah, so you guys still want to see more. Yeah. <laughs> and what would you consider to be, like, the greatest thing that happened in your career so far? Oh, man. I would, I would, as far as in my career, I would say uh, this right now to, to this at this point, working with George Lopez, you know, is, uh, it's 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 been a dream come true. I mean, been been a fa- big fan of uh, George for the longest, and uh, now I get to go to his comedy shows for free. <laughs> you got the hookup already. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so you feel right now you're like in the highest, um, like you're at the highest point of your career. Yeah, you know, I mean, and and it took me a little bit to kind of kind of feel it because I just you know like sometimes I just don't. I don't bother with you know thinking about. So I just I just mm-hmm. do what I do every day, you know, and that's it. But there's times when I like think about it, like, man, you know, this 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 is a great platform, you know, and uh, I can't I, I can't I can't let him down and let my family down. So you know, it's like all we could do from here is just get better. You know, it's true though, like because people just want to give up right away because they don't feel like it's coming along. They want it to happen overnight, and that's yeah, no, it that's happen. not gonna happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, mm-hmm. they, they say. The average time for a, for an actor to blow up or a musician takes like 10, 15 years, you know, to really get to that level. You know? So, it's, you know, and, and, and I look back, like, and I'm like, man, we've been through a crazy ass ride. Like, it's been a roller coaster up and downs. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it it all depends on uh, it depends on uh, how well you hang on. And how bad you want it. And how bad you want it, exactly. Because yeah. I see people that just start something and then they're complaining automatically. Oh, I don't got this. I don't. Well, shut yeah. up and work for it. Like exactly, it's yeah. not going to come to you it if you're not come, trying. Yeah, exactly. You have to just stay on it. That's mm-hmm. it you know? I, I always say, you stay on it consistently. You know, eventually something's going to happen. Something's going to crack. And do you have kids? You yes. Do, right. Yes, I have a 23 year old son named Eric, and then uh, he has a. A little boy, so I have a grandson. Oh, really? And we have another grandson coming on the way in August. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and do you want them to follow in your footsteps, or are, do they have plans to go other directions? Well, my son, he's never been, like, the kind, you know, like, being in front of the camera. He's always been mm-hmm. behind the scenes. He's always helped me, like, in the studio. He does he does audio engineering. So he's uh, he's always done, like, more behind-the-scenes stuff. My grandkid, on the other hand, I don't know. These guys... Well, I haven't met the other one yet, but the one that <laughs> that's already a little over a year, he's he's a character. Oh, really? Yeah, and I can see it in him. Sometimes we we'd be hanging out, and like sometimes I think I go, man, I go, I think this guy right here is gonna do some comedy or something because he's a character. <laughs> <laughs> so you would you like give them that push? Like you know, what? I know these people. Let me help you, or do you want them to start from the bottom the way you did and work their way up? I mean, I look at it like this: if I have if I have the 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 platform and I can help help mm-hmm. them out. And for that matter, help anybody, any anybody out there that I think, okay, yeah, you got what it takes. You could, you could do it. You know, like then, I, then, then I'll, I'll extend that hand out like that yeah. to my grandson, to anybody really. And um, I mean, if if there's no talent, then what what can I say? You know, like you can't help somebody out, and, and if they can't deliver, then what are you going to do, right? You're going to make a fool of yourself, exactly. or you're trying to help yeah. someone out. So you know, if I think they can deliver, then you know, then then I'll help them out. But if I if I don't think they can't deliver, then you know I don't care even if it's my grandkids, you know, and or my son, you know, like nah, I don't think you can pull it off. It's just just don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good because I would rather someone be honest than sit there and lie and make you look stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because there are people that are like that that will tell you, oh, you're doing, you could do it, or you're doing good, and then I don't know, you're out there looking crazy because it's in your head that you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's 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 always good to have somebody to tell you, you know, mm-hmm. but then. You get some people to be like, oh no, you just hating, and, you know. And so it's like, what do you draw? Where do you draw the line between, you know, you're telling the truth and you're hating, or I don't know. I mean, it's it's just a weird subject, but for the most part, I mean, if it's family and it's people that I really uh, get along with, like we're, like we're tight or something, yeah. I'll let them know straight up, like nah, that ain't gonna work. Well, that'll work, you know. Like, mm-hmm. I'll, be, I'll be straight up because that's one thing I've never been as a hater. If if uh, if you got something that 
you can offer and bring to the table, hey, let's do it, man. That's why I always go to CC for things because CC is straight up. CC is honest. Yeah. So if CC doesn't like something, she'll say it. And she's told me plenty of times of things that she didn't like that I was doing or something. And I take her advice because yeah. she she knows. She obviously works in the industry, yeah. and I'm gonna take someone's advice that knows more about that more about it than I do. Pretty exactly, much. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, and at the end of the day, it's it's like she'll do it, but in a way where it's not like like you know, like she was so like you know, you gotta let them know like. Like in a, in a like constructive criticism mm-hmm. type of way, you know, where okay, maybe you know this is what you're doing wrong. I think maybe try it this way, try you know. Yeah, and she's always been helping me. That's why like I never take her advice the wrong way, just because like I said, I know she's doing it for the best of me. Trying she's help trying to out. help me out. She's trying to help mm-hmm. you out, yeah. And when do you have downtime for yourself? Because you're always busy. You're always out doing different things. So when do you have downtime, and what do you do on your downtime? Um, usually, I mean, it, it, it's it's hard to pinpoint downtime because, you know, downtime could be like, like tomorrow I might not do nothing, which mm-hmm. I'm really at. Tomorrow I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> so tomorrow could be some downtime, you know, we'll, you know, hang out with my, my son and grandkids or, or, um, you know, uh, we might have a barbecue at, you know, Mona Marisol's uncles or something, something with family. We'll, we'll do, we'll, you know, we'll do because at the end of the day, um, that's what you, that, that, that's all you have at the end of the day is mm-hmm. family, you know, take all the, the, all the career and everything away and, your family's still there, so we, we, we try to spend as much time as we can on our two Yorkies. <laughs> so you guys have dogs? <laughs> we got two little doggies. <laughs> now I'm here with the bunny. I have a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> so where can um like the viewers and everybody find you? Um, you know, I all my Snapchat, uh, my Snapchat, uh, Instagram, and uh, Twitter is all uh, Big Citric. So it you know, just makes it easy, you know, just to link me up with everything. So just uh, B-I-G-C-I-T-R-I-C, Big Citric. Okay, so that is all I do have for you today. Yeah. So, I mean, I do appreciate you guys coming out. Yeah, no problem, bro. And then you guys could go ahead and follow me on my Instagram at I'm Cesar Guerrero. And make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do upload interviews every Monday. So go ahead and check that out. And like I said, thank you again. Hey, thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah.